Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Faculty Training for Wired Flexible Learning. This is a project of the Far Eastern University, the Commission on Higher Education, High Education by Any Hand Project. At this point, we will have the Philippine National Anthem, the official uh, a prayer, and the manifesto. gathering us today. Give us the fortitude to conquer life's challenges so we can excel and be upright in everything that we do. Guide us to be united in diversity that we may continue to serve and love one another. Amen. FEU, we stand for future ready learning, for continued education, not just for our students, but also for ourselves. Because by learning more about our students, we learn how to be better educators. For educational innovations, because better, more responsive teaching techniques that put emphasis on learning instead of just passing, help our students be better prepared for the future for turning knowledge into wisdom, not just accumulating it, so we can fulfill the potential of every student to be a future leader, and not just an achiever. We are FEU, and we stand for a future-ready generation. We stand for future-ready learning. Magandang umaga po ulit sa inyong lahat. At welcome po sa Faculty Training for Wired Flexible Learning, FEU Shared High Ed Bayanihan Project. I'm uh, Liz Abanto. I am your moderator or master of ceremony. And at this point, uh, we would like to welcome the Vice President for Academic Development of the Far Eastern University, Dr. Mirna Quinto. Good morning, everyone. Fortitude excellence and uprightness. Guided by these core values, Far Eastern University aims at educating and responding to the society's needs. And it is with this desire to extend a tomorrow character and vision that FEU responded to Chad's call to participate in a project that aims at helping other educational institutions become equipped for online instruction. Thus, this FEU Ched High Ed Bayanihan project was born. At the heart of the design and development phase of this Bayanihan project is the collaboration between the experts in the fields of education and technology, roles being performed by two big offices of Far Eastern University, one being the Institute of Education and the other, the Educational Technology Office. These two offices, which form the big part of this FEU Bayanihan team, designed the materials needed to achieve the following objectives. First, to determine the higher education institution's personal capacities for online teaching and use of technologies including their learning management systems. 
Second, to implement an online training for higher education institution faculty all over the country on the flexible learning options in delivering pedagogical content knowledge in their courses. Third, to train this higher education institution faculty on the integration of their course contents into their learning management systems. And lastly, to develop interactive educational learning materials for wired flexible learning options. What significance shall this training bring among the participants? This training is timely and responsive to the demands of the new normal within the COVID-19 pandemic among the higher education institutions. Hopefully, this five-day training will equip teachers with competence and confidence as they shift their learning pedagogies from traditional to wired flexible instruction using technology, interactive, and flexible methodologies to meet learners' needs. This training is significant both to FEU as an institution and to the Commission on Higher Education at this time where teaching methodologies have to adapt to the current complexities brought about by the pandemic. The materials intended to be used shall promote 21st century education and are designed according to the available resources of the target beneficiaries, who in this case are you, the participants of this five-day training. May this training give you the competence and confidence you need as you shift to online instruction. In advance, we thank you for trusting the FEU High Ed Bayanihan team in training you for education and technology, as we also thank CHED for allowing us to take part in this project. Trainers, fellow Tamaraos, and participants from the different higher educational institutions in Luzon, Visayas and Mindanao. Welcome to this FEU CHED High Ed Bayanihan Faculty Training for Wired Flexible Learning. Once again, good morning and welcome everyone. Thank you very much, uh, Vipa, Dr. Mirna Quinto. Ulit sa ating mga participants kayo, magandang umaga, maayong buntag kaninyong tanay. Assalamu alaikum for those in Mindanao in Muslim Mindanao. So you have just heard from our Vice President for Academic uh, uh, Development as to the Russian, uh, to why we are embarking on this project and what we would like to showcase from the Far Eastern University. At this point, we will proceed with the rationale and uh, the structure of the training program. To present this is the head of the FEU Chet Bayanihan project, our university research fellow, and also is the uh, is the Mascom, uh, the professor at Far Eastern University. Please welcome Dr. Maria Teresa Rivera, or we fondly call her Maria. Good morning, po sa lahat. As uh, Liz had said, assalamu alaikum for all of those of our participants who are from Mindanao. Magandang umaga po sa lahat mula Luzon at Visayas. At a very, very good morning sa inyo pong lahat. Uh, ipapakita po namin ang aming uh, training overview para po uh, maintindihan natin ang ating uh, gagawin para sa limang araw na pagsasanay o training. So, we would like to start. Okay, may I uh, get the slides? Okay, may I request our team, please? Okay, thank you very much. Our training for faculty 
for wired flexible learning has the following objectives. For us to determine your capacities for online teaching and the use of technologies, including your learning management system. For us to deliver an online training program for you on flexible learning options in delivering content knowledge in your courses. To train you, all the faculty from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, in how to integrate your course contents into your LMS and to develop interactive learning materials for wired FLOs. Uh, there are two parts of the training. Part one would be integrating content knowledge on education technology, and you will see this uh, in immediately in this first day. Uh, you will see that there would be a calibration of the faculty for online instruction. This uh, part will provide an overview of online learning, focusing on the designing of the delivery and assessment aspects of instruction. The modules will include designing of the course learning outcomes for online learning. And since this training is output oriented, a course information booklet is the final material to be developed at the end of the training. For the second part, you will learn skills to effectively guide and motivate the students, your students, to achieve the course learning outcomes and also to learn skills to assess student performance in an online remote learning environment. We hope that for this second part, you will be able to uh, gather or gain enough skills for your students to be able to adapt to the online learning environment. There will be several modules. Uh, for the first day, we will be uh, interacting uh, on module one, uh, which will present to you an overview of teaching and learning online and an introduction to the learning management system, which is Moodle. For module two, for the next day, we will be designing course expected learning outcomes or what we call as cellos for online learning. For module three, you will be writing a course information booklet. Module four is composed of several parts uh, on teaching and learning online. The first part would be for uh, teaching and learning online for declarative knowledge. The second part is for teaching and learning online for functioning knowledge. And of course, we will have a tech shop which will integrate or use the LMS in online delivery for declarative and functioning knowledge. And you will be creating modules online. This is exciting. And module five, you will also be learn how to assess and grade for declarative and functioning knowledge, which is just a continuation of module four, except that this one is part already of part two, which uh, will help you assess your students and grade them for these knowledge areas. Module six will be online presentation and performance based assessments. And lastly, there will be breakout sessions. So for module seven, you will be exploring online presentations and performance based assessment platforms. And at the end of this, there will be a one on one or maybe course by course uh, breakout sessions where you will explore various productivity tools and platforms. So for the next, uh, for today, August 17, our morning session will cover module, and we call that module 1.1, which as I've said, will be the overview of teaching and learning online. In the afternoon, we will have, uh, sorry, uh, the module covers uh, the following objectives. At the end of this training module, participants should be able to articulate what online learning is, discuss teacher and student responsibilities in online learning, and apply the pedagogical principles in learning online. For this afternoon, and uh, we hope uh, you already know, all those who have uh, committed to participate, that this is a morning and afternoon session. So for the afternoon, you will have module 1.1, an overview of teaching and learning online. And uh, in this module, it is called a tech shop where the, your LMS or learning management system will be articulated. Uh, the learning management system will be explained to you. And of course, 
we would like to include how you would promote responsible digital citizenship and etiquette. In this module also, uh, we have a guest speaker or our main speaker for uh, FEU, who is in charge of our EdTech, who will introduce to us the EdTechs, uh, the FEU's learning management system, uh, which is used by our university. So you will learn a lot in this tech shop in the afternoon. We hope you are still with us, and of course, you are committed to participate for the whole five-day training program. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mayan, for providing us a rationale why we're pursuing this project. And at the same time, you have told us about the five day uh, process or the whole structure. At this point, let me reiterate that we have to follow certain house rules so that the discussions and the flow of this uh, training workshop would be very smooth and very engaging. First, Please make sure that you come to the sessions promptly. The schedule has been provided for this afternoon. We will start at exactly one o'clock in the afternoon. And on the succeeding days, we will again announce to you the schedule. Meanwhile, uh, also may I inform you that should you want to engage, please use the live question and answer button of the Teams. You will see there right in your, on your screen. There's like a question mark. You can post your question or any of your um, concerns that you would like to raise to our moderators or facilitators. And please be informed that this activity is being recorded by the Far Eastern University for purposes of documentation of the training. So that's as much as at this point. We shall start now with the discussion of your first modules. Okay, hold on one second. Let me introduce to you the, the speakers or our resource persons for this uh, session. They will present to you module one, part one, which is an overview of online learning. Our uh, speakers are Miss Lorna Marie, Mary Lorna Tahiwa. She has earned her master's degree in education, major in English at the La Salle Araneta University, and she's uh, a candidate for her PhD degree in educational management from De La Salle Araneta University. Her research interests includes those focusing on English, language, literature, communication, structure of English and literary criticisms. And currently she's a faculty member at the Institute of Education Undergraduate Studies of Far Eastern University. And the other resource person we have is Joseph Hintalan. He had his master's degree in education at uh, major in education administration at Far Eastern University. And also he is a candidate for his uh, doctoral degree in education, uh, a PhD or doctor in education, major in curriculum and instruction at the University of Santo Tomas. His research interests include those focusing on English, language, literature, communication, structure of English and literary criticisms. Currently, he is a program head and he also teaches at the Institute of Education Undergraduate Studies at the University, I'm sorry, sorry, at the Far Eastern University. So friends, friends, please welcome our resource persons for module one, part one. Uh, good morning to, to uh, all of our attendees for, for uh, this session. Uh, let me first start by uh, by uh, honoring each and every attendees as members of the academy. As uh, I know that uh, this past few months uh, have been a challenge to each and every one of us. Uh, but let's try to view these challenges also as uh, opportunities to, to improve and to reach out more people. Uh, hopefully, uh, at the end game of this pandemic, whatever uh, good attributes or good uh, components of the new learning system uh, uh, or method that we're doing right now uh, should remain. I, I believe that ko ano man yung magandang bagay na mag ma yudulot nitong bagong uh, normal sa atin sa education is magremain siya uh, even after the pandemic. Okay, so uh, again, I'm I'm Mr. Joseph Pintalan. I'm the 
uh, program head of uh, FAU Institute of Education uh, undergraduate studies. I'm with my partner for this presentation, Ms. Uh, Lorna C. Kahiwat. So uh, to walk you through on uh, our training for, for, for this morning, uh, the goal of, of, of the first part of module one is for us to articulate what online learning is and for us to reflect on uh, teachers and student responsibilities in online learning. And lastly, uh, apply pedagogical principles in teaching and learning online. So this uh, outcomes for, for the part one of module one will be recurring even in the afternoon and even uh, until the, the last day of, of, of this training. Uh, we acknowledge the different context that we have uh, in, in our school, in our institution. So we would also want to draw out from you through uh, 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 things that you may impart uh, uh, for, for us to enrich the discussion and for us uh, to have a clear understanding of, of, uh, of how we would go over with, with this new normal. Uh, the scope of the training would be uh, talking about what is online learning, the rules of, of uh, this at least would be co the coverage for this morning session. What is online learning? Uh, we would also be discussing the rules of online teachers and the tasks and responsibilities of, uh, of students in, in online learning. Okay. Uh, the structure of of um, the structure of our training would be for, for this session would be there would be lecture videos that would be presented by my co-facilitator Miss Lorna Kahiwat and there will be also uh, work along exercises uh, as I mentioned you'd like to acknowledge the context of each and every participant in this training so we would like to draw out uh, information from you also through our work along exercises and the last part of, of this uh, morning session would be an open forum. Uh, our platform for, for this morning is quite limited in terms of the interaction uh, which is something that we have to face also in whenever when we will be doing the our online uh, teaching and learning session with our students because for most it would be uh, written. So uh, in, in the platform we have right now, you have there your Q&A chat box wherein you can type in questions uh, and you can share their uh, insights also and we will uh, try our best to read all of it uh, during our uh, open forum. Okay, so uh, Miss Mary or Miss Kahiwat have uh, prepared uh, three lecture videos to uh, present an overview of what online learning is. So basically, the overview would would try to encapsulate uh, the uh, details, uh, general details or general information of the training that you will be doing uh, starting tomorrow up up to Friday. So the, the specific and furthering discourse and details of these topics will be covered starting tomorrow until Friday. But it's uh, good that we have this more, uh, first session to set the context of what will be uh, happening for, 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 for this week. So uh, I have also prepared work along exercises to draw out information from you. So every once in a while to to restart our attention and to sustain our attention, we will do work along exercises where we will draw information from you. And lastly, the open forum part, uh, open forum part as mentioned, would uh, be a place or a venue for us to share our insights or share our inquiries to one another. Okay, so for the first work along exercises, our work along exercise before we proceed with the first presentation of Ms. Kahiwat, uh, we would like to draw out from you what word do you closely associate 
uh, online learning, it's important that we share first our insight, our our view of what online learning is before we proceed on doing it to our classes, right? So at this point, I would like you to open a new browser, a new tab, and kindly go to menti.com, uh, type in the code 286815 and 4, and then uh, type in your answer on what word do you closely associate online learning. It, it could be just a short phrase. It could be a one word. It's up to you. But uh, we would like to have an overview of how you view online learning, considering the context you have in, in, in your institution right now. And we'll try to flash it. Uh, uh, we'll try to flash it uh, once we all is, uh, everyone is done. Uh, answering okay so maybe two minutes would be good to to uh, answer this one so uh, I'll, I'll also I'll also paste the website in our or the link in So you can go to menti.com and again, please enter the code 28, and for uh, two minutes, it would be good enough to, to uh, share what you think or what word do you closely associate online learning is. Okay, last one minute. Okay, so we have, okay, some are still answering. Okay, so we have the following insights from our participants. So uh, some answers are recurring, so it is just posted once, but the bigger the word, the most common it is to all of those who are answering. So based on, on these answers, uh, I think many are saying that online learning is quite challenging it is, I think, in my opinion, it is challenging in, in, in a sense that it is the first time. Well, it's not actually, online learning is something that is not new in the field of education. But I think for most of our context, it is challenging in a sense that it's first time that it will be full blown at this extent uh, like this that we'll be doing for the first semester. Uh, so probably some of us 
are doing online learning in terms of, of blended approach we're in uh 50 50 face to face 50 percent face to face 50 percent uh online learning before uh so for this time i think for for most of us or for all of us we are doing it 100 percent online learning so i think it's challenging in that sense it's also challenging and kind of hustle as mentioned here in a sense that we are actually working from home uh, and our mind and our our mindset and our body might not be used to it because uh, when we are at at uh, at our at the comforts of our home, we are the body is feeling that that we should be doing things that should be done at home, and I think it's a challenge for each one of us to to try to reconfigure the mindset that even if we're at home we would be still doing work uh, and school related tasks because of, of this new uh, setup uh, some are also saying about distance learning right so it uh, online learning is a form of uh, distance learning uh, before we also have the the courier system we're in uh, learning materials or analog system where in the learning materials are, are being put, uh, courier to, to our learners and one form of it aside from the courier system is the online learning wherein uh, we use uh, the virtual environment the internet as a medium to provide instruction to our students uh, I'm seeing the word flexible flexible uh, in, in my opinion in a sense that it's bending time and space both for the part of the student and the teacher it is uh, flexible in terms of uh, i've also seen the words asynchronous because there's an asynchronous uh, type of learning instruction wherein uh, it's not required to immediately respond to this particular question or to this particular particular discussion there could be time to reflect on and type in your answer or to type in or 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 turn in your 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 file submission if you are a student right it also provides flexibility on the part of of the teacher in terms of managing uh managing the the instruction because uh the teacher could schedule when to meet the students at at, at the most convenient time of both parties um, yeah it's all it's already 114 okay um uh, this one is positive i think it's it's saying efficient right efficient in a sense that there are some learning management system that makes the task easier for for or actually all learning management system if 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 uh used appropriately and correctly would be uh, simplifying the task in terms of logistic in, in terms of computing the grade in terms of showing the students the grade right so it, it's kind of efficient that way we also have online learning features where in uh, there's a speed grader feature wherein it would simplify us sorting what is needed to be checked right uh, okay what else I, I've seen here uh over the lear uh, internet learning technology computers learning anytime and anywhere this is education it's complex there are pros and there are cons of online learning okay uh for internet connection right uh I, I think we are all familiar with that and i think it's a national issue that the poor internet connection is a national issue and on the part of the institution we are at our our level level we are also trying to address that uh, issue okay okay there's an answer here student centered over the internet learning we have learning through online flexible learning as mentioned a while ago homeschool uh hustle okay uh, wide learning new classroom technology so okay thank you thank you for 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 your insights at least we have a view of each other's perspective at least an overview of each other's perspective uh based on our context of what online learning is 
I'm glad to see that we are not just limiting the view of online learning in terms of of technology tools, right? As I've I've read your your answer, uh, part of it is is seemingly directed or implying the education concept, the education principles, and the pedagogical content knowledge. And I think that is important because uh, right now, if if we if we see the news for most of the time, maybe not all the time, but there are some times or for most of the time, what is being highlighted in terms of online learning are the logistics like technology, availability, gadgets, internet, right? But uh, online learning is not solely about that. I, I, I think based on what you have answered here, right? Even if we have full internet connection, good internet connection, even if we provide all the gadgets, it would not assure online learning, right? Because online learning itself is not dependent solely on the availability of, of technology, on the availability of the internet, right? If, if we would try to analyze the word online learning, it is more of a process. So what is happening in online learning? If we were, if we will be able to to demarcate or to be specific of what is happening on online learning and what is the medium needed for it, then that's the time that we can assure ourselves that online learning is really happening to our class. But technology, availability of technology alone, I think most of you would agree, would not merely guarantee that we are achieving online learning, right? So thank you again. Thank you so much for the 122 participants who have entered their insight on, on, on this word cloud of, of how they view online learning. So for us to uh, to discuss what online learning is, uh, I, I, I would present to you Ms. Lorna Kahiwa. The education landscape continuously changes as both a reinforcement and product of social, cultural, and ideological events. The way people learn and construct knowledge are widely affected not only by technological advancements, but by dynamism in the social and environmental contexts. These changes do not only bring challenges in education, but also opportunities to explore more modalities of learning and reach out more people. As such, online learning is developed and continuously explored as one of the alternative modalities in education in response to these changes. Online learning is a faculty-delivered instruction which immerses students into interactivity through the use of the internet and technology-assisted methods. It requires the signing of pedagogy that facilitates students' engagement as active and reflective learners. This is done by creating courses that allow students to interact online and use their content knowledge to demonstrate different skills relevant to their program. It is highly dependent on the process that takes place using technology rather than solely on the availability of technology. While modalities change, online learning as a process still adheres to quality standards of teaching and learning. Teaching in a virtual environment emphasizes quality outcomes and specifies learning results. Establishing clear and appropriate expected learning outcomes and identifying what knowledge, skills, and attitude are embedded in these results serves as a backbone of designing instruction for online learning. Moreover, the tools or technologies to be used are supposed to support delivery of activities that would allow students to meet the specified learning results. Online learning creates powerful learning environment through technological tools and online resources. Online learning rests on the use of technology, but of equal importance is how students are able to use their cognitive processes to achieve the learning outcomes. The online medium, along with its tools and resources, serves as the learning environment where students are able to draw out insights and combine it to their baseline knowledge to synthesize new information and find new ways of solving problems and finding solutions. Online learning encourages interactivity and collaboration between online participants. 
since students' baseline knowledge changes through experience and from their understanding of learning resources, interactivity and collaboration in both synchronous and asynchronous platform promote deep learning as they allow students to articulate their thoughts and view conceptual similarities and differences necessary for constructing and reconceptualizing knowledge. Moreover, interactivity provides opportunities for learners to deliberate on the task at hand and therefore develops their decision-making skills necessarily for their growth as thinking professionals. Online learning makes students responsible for their own learning. Independent learning in the online platform allows students to do self-monitoring and regulation by reflecting on how they learn or how to improve their learning. Online learning provides a safe climate for learning. Reassurance and support are given to online learners to increase their level of motivation to learn. Students' concern on cyber culture, anxiety, and clarification and expectations and online web etiquette should be properly communicated and addressed to assure them of clear policy, structure, and direction of online learning. Students should be part of the collective process of establishing goals and agenda for the course. Lastly, online learning provides timely feedback synchronously and asynchronously. Through regular feedback using a variety of online communication tools, students are given baseline information on where they are situated and where they are supposed to be headed in relation to the course learning outcomes. Teaching online offers the following opportunities. First, through online modalities, teachers are given access to professional and scholarly resources that they can use in their classes. The EBSCO hosting feature is an example of this extended access. Second, since interaction in online learning can be recorded, the faculty may share practices that can be replicated by their less experienced members through peer mentoring, a practice that creates professional learning communities among teachers. Third, just like students, teachers are able to enjoy the convenience of teaching online of selected hours for as long as they do it within the specified time frame and still effectively facilitate interactivity among students. The calendar feature of LMS is a tool that helps teachers in achieving flexibility in organizing schedule of online teaching. Fourth, Teaching online provides opportunities to rethink ways of teaching and to adapt innovative modalities in teaching traditional courses, mainly through the use of technology-assisted methods. Such modalities also facilitate giving of feedback and computing student grades. The educational opportunities brought by learning online include, first, increase access to information. Online learning increases access to information and enables formation of communities despite physical distance. It also allows students access to global learning resources. Second, through technological tools used in the virtual learning environment, online learning engages students by drawing out their base knowledge and interests. It further caters to different learning styles and helps students to become versatile learners. Third, online learning promotes collaboration to maximize interactivity, allowing students to be more active participants in their learning process by constructing knowledge with their teacher and co-learners. One example of learning management feature that allow collaboration is Google Docs, where a group of students can work on a common output and view other members' contribution to the task. Fourth, students who need more time to process information are given ample time through asynchronous participation in online learning activities. Thus, more students are able to join the conversation as these online learning activities do not require real-time responses, but rather provide a time frame for students to participate. Threaded discussions are examples of these activities. Fifth, online learning is supported by communication channels that allow learners to view detailed and specific feedback from the teacher. 
The feedback mechanism may be asynchronous to benefit learners who may have logistic concerns. Emails, inbox, messages, and annotations are examples of these channels. Clarity on the concept of online learning is needed as students' disinterest to it seemingly fueled by unclear purpose, unorganized structure, and insufficient time to set it up and maintain it effectively. Thus, online learning should be carefully defined along with its parameters to guide both teachers and learners on its rationalization and implementation. Okay, so uh, that 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 uh, that's uh, Miss Mary uh, giving us an overview of what online learning is, and I, I think. Uh, from from her presentation, what we can extract on is that online learning is a process, right? It is something that is uh, associated with technology and internet because it is the medium wherein the process is happening. So uh, we can provide the medium, as mentioned a while ago, right? We can provide the medium but we have to really assure that the process is still happening on that medium and on, on, on this context the medium is a virtual environment so the role or the task of of, uh, of teachers now is to provide a virtual learning environment where students will be able to exercise their thinking capabilities and will be able to demonstrate specified learning outcomes uh, the one shown a while ago was from uh, Daniel Willingham, a cognitive scientist. According to him, uh, the goal of making our students think is by defining what thinking is. And according to him, it is when the schema of the students are combined with what is presented in their environment to synthesize new information. Right, so if we would apply what Daniel Willingham said in the context of online learning, therefore, as teachers, as educators, the online learning medium, the in online learning or the virtual environment, is where our students would get information to combine with their schema and then synthesize new uh, information, right? Uh, as mentioned by Miss Mary also a while ago, it would entail students agency or students looking out on their own learning, being able to have the initiative of, of and the discipline of really enriching their schema, of really enriching their baseline, uh, baseline knowledge so that they can have or they can interact in the process of online learning. Also mentioned in the uh, presentation of Ms. Mary is that there's a sense of interconnectivity in online learning, interconnectivity to the content, uh, uh, interactivity to the content and interactivity with others, right? So uh, it, it somehow entails uh, us teachers designing learning materials that would really uh, motivate and initiate students to interact with the content first so that they could enrich their schema and then on the latter part uh, could make them interact and and connect with with their fellow students and and uh, and, and, their, and their teacher right so uh, online learning has its advantages as mentioned a while ago right so uh, it, it is something that we can replicate and reproduce and uh, we can build network with our fellow uh, members of the academy to share best practices as as online learning is uh, uh, can be easily uh, documented through through the features of, of, of learning management uh, system right so if i would compare your the answers we have right a while ago to the insights presented by, by Ms. Mary, we can say that uh, at least we have 
an idea of, of, of the process that it would entail, right? To make our students think is for them to exercise uh, the different cognitive skills through the content or content knowledge as a vehicle. The vehicle or the content knowledge is a vehicle to exercise their cognitive skills and the environment for it uh, on online learning is kind of virtual and we are somehow responsible on providing that kind of environment as we are a course facilitator in an online learning setup, right? So uh, we are actually discussing right now the rules that we will be having as teachers in online learning. So again, I would like to draw out from you. Uh, I would like to draw out from you. What are the rules that you are foreseeing a, a once the once online learning or wired flexible learning options commence? Ano po ba yung nakita yung rule niyo bilang mga course facilitator, course instructor sa uh, online learning once mag siya. I would like to draw out from you first again before I, I proceed with Miss Mary's presentation. So for, for the next work along exercise, uh, I would ask you to go to this website. I'll type it again here. Okay, please go to, to that link and please uh, type in what do you think are the rules of online teachers? Okay, I'll give you another two minutes to to think about it. Anything, uh, anything that you can think of that would be your role once this online learning commences. Okay, two minutes. Thank you. Again, you can uh, click the link. I've typed it in in our comment section so that you'll be able to to type in your uh, your insights of what do you think will be the rules of online teachers.
Okay, so let's try to view some uh, some of the answers, and there are many. Uh, we'll, we'll try our best to to capture the essence of each. Facilitators of learning, facilitators, facilitator, facilitator. So we have that idea that uh, we are guide on the side, right? We facilitate learning. Uh, we we don't just declare knowledge for for them to replicate, but as facilitator, right? We we have to be clear of what facilitator means. I mean, uh, it, it's it's almost common to us to 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 say or to hear that teachers are facilitators, but uh, we have to be clear also of, of what facilitating uh, mean, right? So, uh, in in terms of online learning, how how would we facilitate a class? How would we facilitate an aha moment? in online learning how would we facilitate discovery of students of of, of how will we uh, facilitate uh, knowledge construction of students in online learning right so uh, we we are we have that common idea that teachers are facilitators right so we have to go over in each of our institution what do we mean when we say that teachers are facilitators and how do we actually facilitate learning in online learning okay we have moderator someone that mediates knowledge between students I, 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 uh, that's how i would interpret the word moderator someone who mediates or control the traffic of exchange of information from the students right so uh, building from the idea of course facilitator we have a moderator that lets students interact and construct their own knowledge and then moderate and mediate the exchange of, of each contracted knowledge from students. We have the guide, the guide on the side. Uh, instead of a sage uh, in the stage, we have the guide on the side. Instead of us teachers declare, declaring our, uh, knowledge in our lecture, we guide our students on the side that they are able to construct their own knowledge and discover on their own uh, the the different insights and, and knowledge about a particular topic. It is uh, teachers are expected to be interactive guide. Uh, one, according to literature, one one uh, factor why there's a disinterest in online learning among students is because of lack of teacher presence. Uh, I don't know if you have heard from your students na, na sinabi sa inyo na, or nagsabi sa school na, ano to, kami-kami na lang. kami na lang bahala sa sarili namin. Right? So, literature is saying is that uh, sometimes students feel that because uh, they have less effective learning caused by less teacher presence. Right? So, when we say interactive guide we should also be clear of when should the teacher be present interacting with their students because online learning advocates independent learning right so we should be clear of when is it possible for students to be independent learners and when when should we interfere as moderator as interactive guide as facilitator of of uh, of learning so uh, what literature is saying is that uh, students, uh, some some of us, and not just students, before are so curious of things when we were young, right? We would like to do things on our own. We would like to read books, even we're not, if even if we are, we were not told to do so uh, when we were young. But literature is saying because we lack the meaningful experience. To apply what we have learned from what we have read uh, eventually we have lost interest on doing independent learning or reading on our own that's what literature is saying so uh, so so one insight we can get from from this this idea is that for us to cultivate independent learning from our students is that we should provide a meaningful experience to them where they can apply what they have learned from their independent learning okay. and, and 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 that would go on the facilitating side of the teacher and and that would uh that would also 
uh, be counted on the role of, of interacting. The interaction would be, as mentioned a while ago, uh, would be on the task of mediating knowledge between students. So they, they have a meaningful exchange, a meaningful situation wherein they can exchange what they have known on their own. And it's, it's like a snowball wherein uh, constructed knowledge uh, grows as, as the class uh, exchange exchange this information with one another okay we are innovators in a sense that we would be developing the, vir the virtual learning environment and we would gear away from the traditional face-to-face uh, -face, uh, environment so we would be the, the one designing the environment the virtual environment on our classes Okay, moderator, as mentioned, to keep our learners well motivated in the comforts of their of their home. So that's what we are talking about, about effective learning. Uh, we have to make sure that we 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 don't lessen students' interest in in online learning. And and later on on the presentation of, of Ms. Mary Kahiwat, she will also be discussing uh, things uh, some 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 ideas or tips on how we can assure and increase students motivation towards online learning we are content creators right so uh, the modules that we created right we we extract we extract insights from readings but we also impart our own insights on this module so we are really content creators good and trustworthy teacher Right, I, I think that that would be coming in in terms of the reputation that we would build online. It's important that since online learning is uh, mostly written, uh, I mean, for most of it, it would be in the form of written communication. I, I, I think the way we would communicate uh, to our students through uh, uh, in text online and even during conferences would uh, build to them our reputation reputation as good and trustworthy uh, teacher it's also a must that we provide or we provide them a, a profile of us in our learning management system a picture and some information about us so that they would have a picture of who is talking to them whenever they receive the email whenever they receive the written communication Mentors and facilitators. Mentors, uh, in a sense that we, uh, mentors is not just during the the instruction proper, but whenever we the students consult to us about their grades, consult to us what they will do to 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 improve their performance. That's us mentoring them, right? So in terms of mentoring, in terms of online learning, we should be uh, open. Uh, we should communicate to them the different modes of communication, email, LMS, uh, that, that, that they can access for, for them to communicate to us, for them, for us to mentor them. Assessor, okay, we will also have a presentation later about the role of teacher as assessor. Okay, uh, flexible, okay. Uh, Okay, not only the source of information but also the facilitators of learning that is something that we would try to reconcile on on our on each of our institution right because uh, we have an option in online learning to record videos uh, re video recorded lecture so when will we do that right and what are the parameters of that so that we can demarcate that this is this medium or this tool is for source of information, but this medium would be for facilitating learning. We have to demarcate which tools is for enriching schema of the student, the baseline knowledge, lecture, a recorded video would be a source of information for enriching schema of students. But we also should uh, 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 determine what are the other tools that would now facilitate learning? As mentioned a while ago during the presentation of Miss Mary, while video streaming can be a source or, or a medium of enriching uh, schema, note taking, graphic organizer, 
uh, online discussion, thinking aloud done online, for example, is the one that would facilitate them, the students, demonstrating the learning outcome. So uh, we should take take that into consideration also. We have mentors, okay, good communicators, okay, okay. So I I I think for most of it we have already. Okay, this one is good. Facilitator and also a core learner, right? In a student-centered learning setup, we are co-constructing with our students. We are co-constructing knowledge uh, with, with them, right? So it is something that we should design in our class. How would we co-construct with our students online, okay? So uh, before we proceed with, with the rules of online learning, to be delivered by again Miss Mary Kahiwat, uh, just to to break uh, some question, uh, some just to answer some questions. Are 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 there some questions listed in the in the chat box, Mam uh, Mam Liz? Can you help me out? Are there some questions that uh, are needed to be addressed in the chat box, Mam? E. Joseph, thank you very much. All right, um, we have questions coming from the floor. Among the, well, I would like to uh, request all our participants. Whenever you have questions, please uh, chat. I mean, type them on the chat box. Kindly identify the institution you're you're from, as well as your question. All right, so I'm trying to uh, go over a few. Well. Um, Particularly on the presentations uh, given to you by Professor Hintalan and Miss Mary. Uh, all right, can can I? Let me see if we have uh, questions. All right. I, I think. All right. The role of online learning is to provide online courses as a solution to the challenges we are facing this pandemic. As students, uh, as the students are provided with quality education at the comfort of their home. Anyway, this was a comment, not really a question raised by an individual who was not able to indicate his name, kindly his or her name, kindly indicate because some of you are entering on anonymous status, kindly indicate your name as well as your uh, institution. Uh, before I, uh, as I am going through all the questions, may I remind all participants to please fill up the attendance sheet for this morning. Um, let me call in the TURL. I, I, later on, I'm going to post a slide for that the, because I, I, I was still facing it. Kindly open, and I hope you will see that uh, Chini hopefully will put it and face it on the chat box or the messages. It says, please fill up the form for your attendance. Fill up HTTPS uh, colon dash dash T-I-N-U-R-L dot com slash Bayanihan T1. So that's for attendance. Anyway, I'm going to post a slide in a little while. Otherwise, uh, the rest of them are asking if uh, they could have a copy of the uh, slides as well as a recording of this uh, lesson or lecture in as much as some of them came late and they're having problems with the internet connection or the audio quality may not be as clear. So yes, you will have a replay. Please make sure you check the pa Facebook pages of Far Eastern University. That's the official Facebook page. And you can also um, access the replay on the FB page of FEU Manila dash Institute of Education. Let me repeat that. I'm going to have a slide later on. FB pages of Far Eastern University and FEU Manila dot Institute of Education. Okay, let me see uh, if we have, uh, I, let, let me try to uh, look at, uh, so the question is um, not really per very particular to the presentation, but the question is, can you share some resources or references from which you base your presentation or discussion? Okay, let me pick that up again. I think, uh, Joseph, you can respond to this. This comes from Kent Batulan from the Cebu Technical University. Can you share some resources or references from which you base your presentation or discussion? Thank you, Paul. Uh, Joseph? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, in terms of, of the of the referencing, uh, we have uh, first and foremost we have the education principles references. We have helping students learn in a learner centered uh, environment. Uh, a guide to facilitating learning in higher education. It is by Doyle, 
uh, Terry Doyle in 2008. We also have the best practices in online teaching strategies by the Hanover Research Council in 2009. We have the Learner-Centered Teaching, Five Key Changes to Practice Second Edition uh, by Waymer in 2013. And we have Daniel Willingham, 2009, Why Don't Students Like School? So this would also be included in the uh, presentation. Uh, later on this afternoon, Sir Richmond, our facilitator for, for the LMS, would be discussing to you how would you have access to these materials? How would you have access to the presentation, to the references, and to the uh, to the video presentations uh, uh, he would discuss to you because uh, there's something that he would discuss to you later in terms of of, of accessing the materials uh, and in, in fact if, if he would discuss to you later also how would you have a hands-on activity so uh, I, I would give this presentation along with the references materials to Sir Richmond so that he can upload this to the to the site or to the platform where you can access uh, all of this. Thank, thank you, uh, sir. All right, thank Ken. you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Joseph. All right, and uh, uh, there are questions as to how they can, uh, how to access the attendance sheet. Um, Chini, could you please flash? Could you share the screen now for the URL? Uh, Chini, or uh, maybe Richmond, or maybe Mayet. Could you share the screen uh, for the the uh, for the uh, URL, please? Okay. While well, um, Chini is getting herself prepared, please, uh, Chini, uh, call my attention if you're ready to share on the screen uh, the instruction on how to uh, sign in for the attendance. Meanwhile, there's one question here, but it's actually general, uh, in a not specifically addressed to the lecture presented or the sharing earlier. The question was, okay, hold on, thank you. I'll get back to that, uh, Bitala. Um, here is the attendance. Uh, she kindly answer the form and make sure this is accomplished before the end of the morning session. So maybe after the presentations of Joseph, okay? All right. Now the question also here of uh, Jason J. Bitala is how can I comment? Where is the chat box section? Thanks. Okay, if you look at your screen, you would notice that there is this horizontal uh, form or horizontal bar, and you have their live, then your camera, and then your microphone. And then let me count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, on the seventh icon, you would see there like a question mark, like it's a question and answer. Okay, so you may type your questions there if you wish, and then I'm going to uh, raise them uh, later on with the uh, facilitator. All right, and let me see if there are new questions, otherwise I'm going to turn it over. Okay, hold on. All right, so yes. Um, a question yep. here says, is, is the training oh, yes, for application to college students, high school students, or both? You might have missed it out. Ah, okay, thank you. That, uh, so are the applications um, applicable to high school and tertiary education? That, that's the gist of the question, Ms. Khan. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay, would you like to respond to that, please, uh, Sir Joseph? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Uh, so the context of this training is for higher education. So, uh, but what I can see is that the education principles that we are trying to convey in this in this uh, setup or in this uh, forum can be contextualized to high school and and I think even to to grade school, but specifically the context of, of what we are sharing right now is for higher education. But again, since these are education principles, it can be contextualized in the basic education. All right, thank you very much. Here's another question. Are there, oh, are there standards? Because as a, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to um, follow. Anyway, 
they were talk, asking about the standards of etiquette for students for online learning. Uh, would you be able to respond to that, Sir Joseph? Uh, the, the standard, the etiquette for online learning. Sir Joseph? Lastly, the standards for, hi ma'am, can you hear me? By Miss Kathy? No, uh, that, that would be discussed yes, later yes, on do. by, that would be discussed later on by Sir Richmond in the afternoon session, the introduction to LMS. He would be discussing the online web uh, netiquette. Okay, thank you. All right. Again, there's a request here. If you could possibly, uh, Chini, post again or show on screen the link for the attendance. Could you kindly flash it once again, Chini? After this, we shall proceed again with Professor Hintalan's presentation. Can you flash again the attendance, Chini, please? All right, there you have it, friends. All right, so please take note of the uh, link. Okay, again, uh, we have noted that some of you are coming in anonymous. You have failed to register. Uh, and for some reason, there are some internet connection problems. So please kindly make sure that you type your name as well as the institute, institute where you belong. Okay, at this point now, may, may we please bring back our uh, resource person, Professor Joseph Pintalan, so we can continue with our presentation on module one entitled Introduction uh, I mean, overview of online learning. Sir, sorry, you may proceed. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, so uh, so far we have discussed uh, the process that that entails online learning. As mentioned, the the internet, the LMS is the virtual environment where we have to design our lessons. This virtual environment would would be the source of information of students that they can combine with their schema to synthesize information to construct knowledge right so for the next part of the session uh, i would again uh, turn over the presentation of of miss america Hiwat. for this next video he will she would be presenting the expected rules of online teachers In any environment, face-to-face -face or online, the roles of the faculty are the same in that the goals of learning are fundamentally the same. However, there are certain tasks peculiar to the virtual learning environment. The Hanover Research Council of 2009 identifies areas in the instructional process where the roles of online teachers are coached. First, planning and development. Second, teaching and action. And third, student assessment and data evaluation. Planning and developing the course is crucial to the success of online learning, central to which is the teacher's choice of sound pedagogical principles and appropriate technology. Thus, teachers should a lot ample time for course planning before semester begins. Developing online courses can be time consuming due to the technical preparations involved on the top of the organization of course components like learning outcomes, tasks, and assessment activities. Designing the online course is anchored primarily on the expected learning outcomes and secondarily on the availability of technological tools. Thus, the faculty should ascertain how the course learning outcomes can help achieve both the program and university learning outcomes. The structure of a learning outcome is composed of a stem, verb, content, and context. For example, in this learning outcome, here is the stem the verb, the content, and the context. Course topics may be organized by modules or by reading materials following spiral progression of concepts. The task in each topic should be chunked into reasonable parts to help students manage their time in self-paced and collaborative learning. A teaching learning situation is a combination of circumstances for which a set of teaching learning activities is created. 
One example of a situation is a lecture, which may include activities like video streaming, note taking, question storming, and think aloud modeling. While video streaming can be an activity for students to acquire base knowledge, it is in the ensuing teaching learning activities which allow students to demonstrate the expected learning outcomes through application of acquired base knowledge. Assessment activities are designed to de determine whether students are performing and achieving the expected course outcomes, identifying which of the tasks are formative or summative, graded or not graded, reinforcement or enrichment, will help teachers in organizing the course and guide students in managing their time. Of importance in planning assessment tasks are the rubric to be used as basis for grading as well as feedback mechanism. Assessing which technological tools and learning management system features can support the conduct of teaching learning activities as needed to ensure that the use of any technology in the course has a clear purpose. The right choice of online tools and features puts to good use of the teacher's and student's time and skills. Chunking assignments and assessments into manageable pieces with clearly articulated time frame creates a space for students to receive feedback from the teacher before they proceed to the next part of the module. Asynchronous learning may not be suitable especially for the underperforming students who need more guidance from the teacher. Therefore, it is necessary to develop reinforcement modules for synchronous mode of learning. The course information booklet or course outline serves as a teacher's and student's course guide. It should include the expected learning outcomes, topics with the corresponding learning materials, teaching and learning activities, assessment mechanism, and assignment due dates. Class policies also form part of the CIB. This can include web etiquette and the policy on academic integrity. All plans to be actualized in the online course should be communicated to the students. This will clarify expectations from the beginning and will ensure that both students and faculty agree on how the class will be delivered. Class orientation can be done synchronously and asynchronously in different forms of electronic content like video conferencing, video upload, and created FAQ page. The presence of a teacher in an online class is needed to mitigate many students' unwillingness to engage in online learning. Different learning management system features and other communication channels can be tapped to increase teachers' visibility and consequently cultivate motivation and higher levels of effective learning. The following tasks are to be carried out in facilitating online learning. Emphasizing the essentials of the instructional design to students will ensure that they know from the start what to expect from the course. It also allows students to negotiate with their teachers on certain elements of the course. Other information related to online learning that a facilitator should explain to students include the difference between online learning and the traditional classroom, difference between online and face-to-face -face communication, and extensiveness of reading and writing in an online course. Teachers should pick activities that are within the student's background knowledge. Ideas may be processed with the teacher facilitating discussion sessions or through dialogue via synchronous and asynchronous methods to deepen students' learning experience. Discussion questions should be varied and arranged according to level of complexity. Teams of students with diverse backgrounds may be created to encourage cross-cultural interaction. Teachers may provide learning materials that invite different views to allow students within the group to discuss conflicting perspectives. In preparation for the interaction, the teacher should be ready with guided discussion questions ranging from interest and attention-getting questions to expression, of criticism questions that would guide students on the flow of their online group activity. 
The learning management system has features that enables teachers to track the progress of students. These features allow the teacher to identify who among the students have not logged in or have not been on board for a certain period, in which case the teacher may contact these students to verify if they are experiencing technical difficulties. Teacher-student communication online learning can be written or oral, synchronous or asynchronous. Outside of the learning management system, communication channels like emails, SMS, and other channels can also be used. Aside from communicating instructions, resources, and feedbacks, teacher may also reach out to students to remind them of appropriateness of language in virtual communication. This, however, should be done using non-discriminatory or non-offensive language and seriously considering cultural diversity. Teachers must be sensitive to students experiencing cyber anxiety. If such case occurs, the teacher should communicate to the guidance and counseling office for further advice. Similarly, students with violations of the academic integrity policy should be referred to the student discipline office. Despite the teacher's best effort to provide clear instructions, queries on the technology used in the course may be arise from some students. Hence, they should be able to address those basic issues or refer them to the information technology system or educational technology department if the problem is highly technical. The teacher's role as course assessor in online learning is also crucial in shaping students into active and reflective learners. Central to this role is the giving feedback, which can make or break the students and can usher them as they journey from one phase of learning to another. Thus, in the course of assessing learning, teachers should Provide multiple opportunities for graded assessments. Multiple assessment activities should gather information on students' progress with respect to the target learning outcomes. These activities may be in the form of formative and summative assessments. Note, however, that summative assessments are built from the formative assessments. Hence, formative assessments should provide opportunities for students to develop and enhance the skills needed to perform the summative assessment. Online learning may have a self-paced learning component, but the teacher should still set deadlines, primarily to keep students on track, and secondarily, for them to avoid procrastination. It is advised that the deadline be set for each assessment activity to allow time for feedback. Teachers should ensure that students understand how they will be graded. A clear rubric indicating the expected quality of the task should be presented to students before the start of any assessment activity. The rubric may also be used to give credit to students' online engagement, not necessarily in synchronous activities, but the teacher should ensure that students are given equal opportunities to maximize their participation. This can be done by clarifying the parameters and standards of the online engagement. Assessment without feedback renders it futile. The latter is an essential byproduct of assessment and evaluation as it informs students where they are situated in demonstrating the expected learning outcomes. But feedback should be constructive. Teachers should avoid humiliating remarks so as not to demotivate students. Feedback should also be timely to help students improve where it is necessary and for them to be ready for their learning of the succeeding skill sets. Furthermore, teachers are tasked to provide not only quantitative but also both general and individual qualitative feedback. General qualitative feedback are insights for improvement for the whole class to reflect on while individual qualitative feedback provides specific details for areas that a student needs to work on. Consistent review of the instructional design gives teachers insights on the quality of their learning and ensures that the program standards are being met. Thus, teachers should review their teaching learning materials and methods periodically and should be open to students' feedback. Okay, so 
uh, that's the second uh, presentation of, of, of Miss Mary uh, about uh, this time the roles of teacher. So uh, in essence, uh, the roles of online teacher are, are seemingly basically the same with the face to face, but there are some as mentioned by Miss Mary specific to to online learning. So as course designer as instructional designer, we have to engineer our courses in such way that it is still anchored on the learning outcome. I mean, uh, that the available the availability of technology is not the primary consideration of, of, of designing it, but the primary consideration would be what is the intended or expected learning outcome for for each course or for each topic. And then how is this uh, course expected learning outcome uh, uh, constructed in such way that it is heating uh, the learning outcomes of the program, right? So once determined, once structured, clearly structured, the learning outcome now would be the basis for us to design teaching learning situations. Teaching learning situations are combination of circumstances, are combination of activities that would allow our students to demonstrate the expected learning outcome. And as mentioned a while ago by, by Miss Mary, right? we can do short video recording or we can ask them to read and we or we can ask them to watch a particular uh, clip to enrich their schema but but it would just make make our students listen and we're not hitting the learning outcome so what is suggested is for us to develop or design teaching learning situation so it's not just only it should not only just be video streaming it should, not, it should not only be just just listening to a lecture it should not just only be reading alone but it should be coupled with different teaching learning activities that would make them think and that would uh that would that would hit the particular learning outcome after deciding this this teaching learning situation that's the time that we will now assess which of this technology can support this particular activity, or we can do it. We can do it simultaneously, right? We can, we can identify the activity as uh, along with the availability of technology that can support and assist it, right? So it, it it starts with the learning outcome really, and then the teaching learning situation, and then uh, the activities along with the technology that that can support the uh, activities. In, in terms of uh, facilitating, uh, again, I, I think what is mentioned by, by Miss Mary is that we, be, we should be strong on uh, mediating the different information coming from our students and we should uh, cultivate to them uh, different critical and 21st, critical thinking and 21st century skills and that's what is being mentioned a while ago a recurring idea of Daniel Willingham that it's important in online learning that students are, are, are well disciplined uh, student that they on their own initiative they would they would enrich their schema they would read the required readings they would watch the required videos so that they can uh they they can interact with the content and they can interact with with their students one uh, uh one way of, of of helping our students on being independent learners are what we call work along exercises the one that we're doing right now is is for drawing out information but there are work along exercises that can be given to students wherein they would organize the information based on what they have known on the reading, based on what they have known on the recorded lecture. So this would help them really on, on, on progressing as independent learning, designing our work along exercises on, on how they will organize the, the information, the schema, the, 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 the enriching schema that they, they have. Uh, in, in terms of course assessment or co assessing the course, I would like to emphasize the, the importance of feedbacking. Uh, as mentioned by Ms. Mary, uh, 
we should be strong on feedbacking because students are learning on it. It, it, it. Feedback should be something that is concrete and detailed. Again, what literature is saying that is saying that it's okay to, to say you're good at this, right? You're, you're very good, but in reality, it's not helping them progress because there's no specific uh, comment on, on that feedback on what, what are the good points and what should be improved. So in terms of feedbacking, we should be concrete on it. If, if, if we ask our learners to submit an essay, we should annotate it line per line if needed to, to comment on it, right? We highlight the good points, but we also highlight what are the things that are needed to be improved or under, uh, under submission, right? Uh, also in, in, in assessing, or sorry, uh, there are learning management system features that could enable us to be efficient in terms of feedbacking. Uh, an LMS could have an annotation feature where in pedinatic highlight part by part yung, uh, the submission of student and then we can type in our comments on that. Uh, also, uh, for online learning, I would like to add on that it's encouraged that we do authentic assessment. Uh, I've encountered one question from 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 a from our co uh, from a colleague during our discussion. Sabi niya, how 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 would I do a paper and pencil test here? Uh, since it's online, it, it the answer can be easily found in in, in Google. Sabi niya. So uh, uh, my personal take on it is that this kind of the paper and pencil test the, the true or the the identification for example and even sometimes the multiple choice is an assessment that can be done as uh, as a review of their schema a review of what they have learned a review of the declarative knowledge the content knowledge that we have that they have learned but in order for them or for us to assess the learning outcome since learning outcomes are something demonstrated by the learners, it's a manifestation of the cognitive thinking skills. And I think what is appropriate would be an authentic assessment. We ask them to, to produce uh, an output, an essay, for example, uh, uh, a product, or we ask them to, if, if, if uh, permitted by the platform you're using to perform something, to, to make an advocacy speech, for example, All right? So these are authentic tasks that would really foster and exhibit the learning outcome where they are on their learning outcome. So I hope we don't forget that even if we shift into online learning. Yes, we can still use the objective type of test, but I think it's limited now on assessing the declarative knowledge it's limited now on assessing the schema. It's limited now on assessing the, the content knowledge. But if we are really hitting, if we want to hit the learning outcome and we want to assess it, we're really hitting it, we are recommending, we, we are encouraged to use uh, authentic assessment as a, as a form of, of assessment to our students. Likewise, I would also like to highlight uh, what Ms. Mary said, no, na, we should provide multiple opportunities for fit for assessment. If you would notice a while ago, there's a concept of reinforcement module because we are acknowledging that some of our students might not be that independent. They would need our guidance. So uh, if we design module or if we design a particular module and we think that they cannot proceed with module two, for example, because they do not have satisfactory grade on module one, I think we should design also a reinforcement for module one so that we know that they'll be ready for module two. And I think that's one function or feature also of LMS. We can have prerequisite for each for each module. They can't proceed with module one unless they're good or they have satisfactory uh, performance on, on, on module one. All right. Uh, so I, I think that's the highlight of, of the of the rules of teacher. Again, I'm just presenting to everyone the overview, details of how to do it, 
how to teach online, details of how to assess online would be lay, uh, would be presented on the coming sessions. Uh, I think we have a module for that, uh, teaching and learning uh, online and assessing learning online. We have a module for that. I think it's module uh, four and five, if I'm not mistaken. So that would be discussed in detail on the coming days. Okay, so. Uh, I would proceed now with uh, with our next part. We still have one more video uh, lecture from from Mam uh, America Hiwat. It's it's just a short one. It would deal with the uh, with expected tasks and responsibilities of students. But again, I would just just again to to draw insight from you and at the same time to to restart our attention. I I would like to. Uh, to do one more work along exercise. Okay, so I want to draw out from our participants right now. Uh, what do you think are the tasks or responsibilities of students in online learning? So again, I, I would be I will be posting the link in the chat box. You can click on the link and it will be uh, directed to a Google document file. I've I've chunk expected uh, tasks and responsibilities of students into four, but uh, there's a possibility that it's not only four, right? But for the convenience of of mapping it out, I I put it into four. Uh, I I named it independent learning, time management, participation, and reflection. So I want to draw out from you, from your context right now, what do you think are the expected tasks or responsibilities of students in terms of independent learning, in terms of time management, in terms of participation, and in terms of reflection? You can type in anywhere in this table. You can choose if you want to just to put in the independent learning task, or a time management task, or participation task, or reflection task, or if you want to fill out in each column, you may do so. Okay, so uh, I, guess, I guess three minutes would be enough for us to draw out enough information. You may start filling out the table now. Thank you. Again, the, the task is for us to to fill out what we think are the responsibilities or tasks of students for each aspect, identified aspect of online learning. <coughs>
Okay, so, wow, there are so many inputs. So this is a proof that we can work on collaboration, even if it's online, right? Uh, I mean, there are hundreds of us right now in, in, in this training. Uh, and we are putting all our inputs on one document. Right. So I, I would like to read some while some are still typing in because it's already 1050. In terms of independent learning, do not rely on spoon feeding. Students should be able to read beyond what is required. Uh, that is correct in a sense that uh, online learning advocates independent learning. Uh, on the part of the teacher, what we can do is to provide them with the with is to, to train them with the foundational skills and provide them with the tools. What do we mean when foundational skills? Uh, foundational skills, some of the foundational skills that we can first teach our student is the skill of annotating, the skill of doing marginal notes, the skill of organizing information. Once we are able to teach this uh, sa una pa lang ng pagtuturo natin, as they proceed on each reading, as they proceed on each lesson, they they, they have now the the skill on, on on how to go beyond what is being required from them aside from reading, right? So uh, they, they will if, if we will be able to to teach them how to synthesize information, what's the difference between summary and synthesizing? That's a big help to them already. Aside from that, we should also provide them with the tools. What are the tools that they can use? In, in independent learning, right? One one tool that that is common to our to us teachers is the different forms of graphic organizer. We can have, for example, a prior model wherein we can set four teams already on a particular topic, and then we let them uh, plot information based on how they view it as part of the particular team. We can also do concept map. Uh, we can also provide them a, uh, uh, a tool for concept mapping, right? So that they can they can connect ideas together on a particular topic or a particular reading. So so these tools can be done online, and hopefully uh, at the end of this training week, uh, you have an idea of of these tools to our to our uh, facilitators in the edtech. They they would be sharing to you LMS features that that can be used as a tool for independent learning of students. We also have self-understanding of the lesson written here, as mentioned a while ago. Responsible students in required reading materials, correct. Uh, research, right? Part of, of independent learning is doing their research. But again, a part of our responsibility as teacher is to equip them with the, with the tools at the same time with the foundational skills that they can, or I mean to train them with the foundational skills that they can use to demarcate which of this information that they have researched is fake news or not. Yeah, mahalaga po ngayon sa panahon na to na ma-demarcate ng studyante kasi uh, in terms of, of researching, everything can be researched through the internet, but the skill of navigating on these informations or the skill of demarcating which is fake which is not how do you look at the source and how do you determine if the source is fake or not that is a foundational skill that we need to train our students pag na train natin sila ng mga foundational skills they can go on as lifelong learners they can proceed as independent learners perform different outputs output based activities as mentioned a while ago authentic assessment is a very ideal uh, in a student centered learning setup uh, both in face-to-face -face and online learning. Students should uh, be honest on, on, on their responses. So again, uh, part, as mentioned by Ms. Mary a while ago, no, academic integrity policy could be part of our course outline or course information booklet. Uh, we can discuss it with them during orientation. The web netiquette can be discussed during our first meeting with them during our uh, in orientation. Conscious and responsible. That's the one that we we're mentioning a while ago about student agency, about student being able to reflect their progress 
and students being uh, have having the initiative to learn on their own. But again, each task of the learner would correspond to a responsibility to a teacher. Diba? In terms of reflection, again, we are in charge of designing kasi the teachers. What are the tools that we can use that would assist them on their reflection? What are the materials that we can design in terms of them reflecting on their own learning? Diba? Sa, sa atin pong part yung mag sa kanila, they could be the one doing it, diba? but, but we should be there to assist and provide them what are the tools that they can use, Albawa, reflection, ano yung pwede natin i-design activity online that they can reflect on, on what they're learning. Is it a journal? Is it a portfolio? We have an online portfolio a feature in LMS, right? So uh, actually a page, we can ask our student to design a page in an LMS wherein they would, it would serve as their portfolio. Right, so we can we can do that also. So the this, the idea is that uh, yes, students are responsible for for reflecting, but what can we do as teachers to assist them and help them uh, on on this process? We also have be in conscious learners, right? As students study on their own pace, they are expected to be honest and diligent, right? Uh, part of the academic integrity, learning, read learning models without other people's inter. Uh, Intervention. Again, as mentioned a while ago, no, mahalaga na ma-equip muna natin sila ng foundational skills para kahit sila na lang ang nagbabasa, alam nila kung paano mag-organize ng information. Student learn at their own pace, anytime, anywhere. Read and acquire learning beyond. Okay, self-motivation, uh, the effective learning part. Uh, but as teachers, we also have a responsibility not to lessen the motivation that, that, that they have, right? So, uh, again, as mentioned a while ago, yung presence natin at the right time to guide them whenever they need assistance in terms of consulting, kahit siya ay technical aspect, uh, we should be there to assist them also. Okay, self-regulation, okay, have confidence in answering the given task, read the preferences provided by the teacher independently. So. I, I think we have a good grasp of what independent learning is and uh, hopefully later on the presentation of Ms. Mary Kahiwat, he, she would she would uh, share with us what are the different tasks that students are expected in terms of independent learning. I'll, I'll go quick on time management and the other remaining aspects. Be patient and form an organized table. Good, right. Uh, again, we can assist them on providing the, the medium for that, but on their own, they should be able to, to manage their own task. At the same time, an LMS has a calendar feature, so madaling ma-inform ang studyante dapat kung, kung merong task at hand. Uh, on part of the teacher, let's also be responsible on giving, on giving due dates, right? So we cannot just say na hating gabi, magibigay tayo ng reading, and then tomorrow, uh, discussion na pero yung reading pala is 100 pages. I, I, I think yeah, students are responsible to, to organize the time but uh, teachers are also responsible on organizing the time. Right? It's, it's a, an outlook of both parties. Watchful in with time in taking online exams. So maybe we are referring here to time quizzes. Right? Uh, be prompt on, in submitting online uh, assignments. In terms of due dates, I, I think that is something that we can negotiate with our students, right? Because we should also be aware of the different context of our students. Baka naman MECQ sa kanila or ECQ sa kanila, medyo mahirap ang internet sa kanila. So we should also recognize that. So we can, at the first week of our classes, we can negotiate with them the, the terms of due date. Would the due date be a week-long due date or would it be uh, one day due date depending on, on what would be discussed by the class. Students should be uh, prompt, be time bound uh, activities to discipline self, right? Okay, so I think we can say that the, the, the features of, or the responsibilities and tasks of, of time management is somehow connected with independent learning. Okay, in terms of participation, be actively engaged in the class session. Okay, so uh, participation can be done synchronously and asynchronously. Synchronously can be through discussion, 
through the use of, of video or audio conferences. Asynchronous can be in terms of of discussion pages, right? We or or, or chat box, right? So we we can discuss, uh, we can do that, uh, but let us anticipate also that some uh, students might not be uh, ready for uh, particip participating online uh, asynchronously. Because we have mga student na medyo mahihayan in terms of camera. So that's something that, that we have to deal with them first. And we can allow them first to, to participate asynchronously or through chatting or through text, through written form. Para hindi pa rin madi-discourage na mag-participate sila. Uh, okay, Sir Jose. Sir yes, Jose. Time check, yes, it's 11.01. So, uh, I think we have to wrap up. Could you kindly conclude the presentation? I understand we have several questions that have been posted here in the Q&A. Actually, I think uh, our uh, resource person has this great intuition. He was able to respond to many of your questions, whether the students are really doing their job, the fact that they are not seen online, and then how you could make it more effective. Uh, in view of the fact that online learning may be challenged by internet connection, I think he was able to uh, respond to most of it. Now, uh, can I give you a minute, uh, Sir um, Joseph, to wrap up or synthesize? And then before I finally close the session for this morning. Thank you, Sir Joseph. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, to our uh, participants for, for this morning session, uh, I, I, I would like first to thank each one of you for signing up to FEU uh and and shed uh training for forward flexible learning options now I, I apologize that we we ran out of time for the last video presentation of mam Ma kahiwat but this is a recorded presentation so i would ask sir richmond to to upload all our video presentation in the uh, repository or in the website where you can access all of these materials uh, to conclude my presentation uh, this is just an overview of what you will experience in each session this week long. To conclude my presentation, I, I think it's the mandate of our institution to really, really be clear on the parameters of what online learning is. Right? As mentioned a while ago, recurring idea, it's not solely dependent on uh, the availability of technology, but rather on the process that happens when using this technology. We have to be clear on the process itself for us to assure and to claim that online learning is really happening. And hopefully with the succeeding training session, you will be equipped with both the pedagogical content knowledge and with the ed tech tools that you can use uh, to proceed with your online learning. Again, Thank you to our participants for this morning session. I, I will. I promise you that all materials that, that we use here will be accessible to you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Sir Joseph Pintalan, and also Miss Mary Kahiwat. Although she was not able to join us live, but she was able to make the presentations. Now there were even comments earlier that we received that the presentation was a bit fast, and they could hardly catch up. Again. We are reminding you that a replay of these um, presentations will be available on the Facebook pages of Far Eastern University Manila or FEU Manila Institute of Education. This will be posted later. Um, well, unfortunately, some of you have been coming in late. We have problems with internet connections. Um, you couldn't seem to, apparently there were others who were not able to really log in or really join us this morning. I hope all the kinks will be resolved this afternoon. And also earlier we mentioned that, um, you know, online learning is really challenging as you have uh, posted earlier. It is really very challenging as you see, um, even us right now conducting this, we've had problems of interconnectivity. So, um, well, we hope we can solve some of these issues later in this afternoon. So for this morning, I'm going to officially close the session on the mo uh, for which we've had the opening ceremonies and the rush, the message by our uh, Vice President for Academic uh, Development, Dr. Mariana Quinto, and the rationally and the structure of the training by Dr. Mayer uh, Rivera, and of course, the presentation of Module 1, Part 1, which is an overview of online learning by 
Miss Lo Mary Lorna Tahiwat, and Sir Joseph Pintalan. So please make sure that you're back before one o'clock. Log in by 12.45. That way, any other instructions or announcements may be uh, delivered. Also, during the break, although you may be having your lunch, uh, we will be playing some videos that you can possibly learn from or also get to know more about FEU or what we're doing here at FEU pertaining to online discussions. This afternoon, we will start at exactly 1 o'clock. So as I said, be there before 1 and we will have the module one part two, which is an introduction to the learning management systems. That will be a very interesting discussion. Again, thank you very much. This has been your moderator, Liz Abad. Thank you. I'll see you again later this afternoon.